recently I finished penciling all of chapter six. Um, so that puts us at our next stage of my comic creation process, which would be watercoloring. But I wanted to take a few minutes and show you guys um, how the pencils turned out and show you my materials. So when I'm doing, um, when I'm doing, sorry, I'm looking, there it is. When I'm doing uh, the roughs, I wanna work with a pencil that has a B lead in it. And I like using this Polymatic, which came in my January Art Snacks. Um, it's a little easier on my hand, it's a little chunkier. I tend to be um, kind of ham-handed or heavy-handed, tend to grip my pencil too much. So um, a bigger pencil like this over a smaller pencil like this is less likely to cause, um, uh, to make my arthritis in my right hand flare up. Now, um, when I'm penciling the page itself, I don't want to use a, huh, I don't want to use a, a B lead because when I add water on top of the pencil, it's going to make the pencil smear. I want a harder lead like an H even an HB um, because these are dark enough that I can see what I'm doing but they're not so dark that they're going to smear and I personally like Pintel's high polymer super lead in H uh, and a 0.7 millimeter lead since we talked about me being heavy-handed I tend to snap fives and threes very easily and nines are a little too big for me so, um, that's, I mean, other than watercolor paper, which is Canson Montval watercolor paper that I've run through my printer, and it prints these very faint blue lines. Now, those are going to be, um, those are going to go away when I stretch my paper. So, it's not really a big deal. And there are nicer watercolor papers available. I'm not using Montval because it is the nicest paper. I prefer painting on Canson, Arch I mean, Arches or Fabriano, personally, but I use it because it is affordable, it performs consistently, and it works well for my watercolor comics. And as I flip through the pages, you guys will notice that... Um, I haven't lettered it yet. I do that digitally with a font that I made custom to look like my handwriting and um, with brushes designed to look like color pencils. And doing it digitally allows me to make modifications to the um, dialogue as I go along. In my 500 followers video, I talked a little bit about how um, manga was a big influence on the kind of comics I make. Um, I talked about how <laughs> an early uh, anime influence in the form of Americanized or Westernized animes that were uh, released for American consumption, like Fox's Peter Pan and the Pirates, which was actually a TMS production. Um, those sort of animated programs really influenced my taste and they really influenced my style. So um, I use those aesthetic influences, which makes me like the art I like. I, it is no, I can't change my affection for that art style any more than somebody could change their skin color. I mean, you can do things to it to modify it, to make it more palatable to other people who have an opinion about it, and maybe they don't need to have an opinion about it. Um, but you you are who you are, and my the way I draw is part of a reflection of that. That doesn't mean, though, that I have an excuse to... Um, be lazy or not try to render people in a believable manner. The style I use to draw hair or eyes has nothing to do with um, how my characters emote, the gestures they use, the expressions they have. Um, and most of my gestures, my expressions, those are either pulled from real life or um, from like past personal experiences. Faces my friends might have made, gestures my parents used to have my own facial expression when I am zoned out. And another thing that people keep uh, commenting on the comic is they keep assuming that the main character, Kara, is supposed to be an author self-insert. And it doesn't seem to matter how much I tell them no, not at all, 
Uh, they still seem to think so. So definitively, her mother is actually based on my personality. Uh, Kara is kind of like an idealized childhood. She's homeschooled um, and she's very precocious. The world hasn't beaten her down yet. Um, she doesn't have a lot of experience. She's a little bit naive. She's been very sheltered. Her um, her association with other kids her age is kind of limited, more through distance than her parents trying to keep her away from other, other Lilliputian kids. Here's a double page spread. And when I paint it, I'm going, I have a large gator board and I'm going to tape them side by side to make sure that um, I'm not trying for like a perfect lineup in terms of brush strokes. I just want to make sure the colors are uniform so that, um, oh, I'm sorry, when it's sewn together, it's a little bit, it, it's, it makes more sense, if that makes sense. <laughs> it makes more visual sense than um, if I painted the two pages separately. And one of the things people who have heard about my comic but haven't read it at all, one of the things they say is she needs to interact with animals. She needs to interact with animals. Well, I mean, she does in book one. She's got a pet gecko, and she meets Pancake, this kitten, for the first time. But um, I decided they were right. She does need to interact more with animals. So, for instance... There is a page where Kara and her mom are feeding the spiders the family keeps um, for their silk because her mother is a seamstress. So, you know, they would need thread. Well, human thread is huge compared to them. So spider silk seemed like a good seems like a good option, especially because it is so tough. And I imagine if it was spun um, to be multi strand, it would be even tougher. And of course, my whole reason for creating this comic, cat writing. No, that's not really why. But I mean, you can't have a comic about tiny people and not have some cat writing, right? And a cultural exchange where Naomi tries Kara's Lilliputian food and Kara tries Naomi's human food. And Naomi gets so excited by Kara's initial response that she feeds her some junk food. And uh, I wanted an activity that they could do with their hands while they talk. So I had them make flower crowns out of clovers and dandelions, which are both really common kind of yard flowers or even yard weeds in Southeast Louisiana. end so technically the chapter ends on this page but one of the storytelling tropes that i enjoyed from manga is um some comics like uh yotsubato yotsuba and they have um after the story ends there's another beat like a self-contained beat and i like doing that with kara so here's the self-contained beat of her mom kind of snickering at her flower crown as she comes back maybe because she's so cute but it's also a little ridiculous so that's my pencils for Seven Inch Kara chapter six. And it took like two and a half. It's um 30, let's see, I think it's 31, but it might be 32. Yeah, it's 31 pages. So it's one of my longest chapters yet. Um, and the chapter before it was 25. So book two is gonna be like, book one is like this big, book two is gonna be like that big. Um, it's one of my longest chapters yet, and it technically has two parts, where it's Kara at home, she wants to go see her human friend, but her mom keeps coming up with excuses to keep her around the house, and then part two, where Kara finally is allowed to go see her friend, and they have a good day. So, um, 
I will check in with you guys again when I'm ready to start watercoloring this. Now, my desk is not ideal for watercolors of this size. So for my demonstration, I'm just going to watercolor the cover for you guys. And if I can come up with a better filming situation, I'll switch over to that and try to record um, some footage. This isn't intended to be a watercolor tutorial, nor is it even really supposed to be a watercolor for comics tutorial. It's more of how I make comics to get you guys inspired to make your own. And some of you have already commented on the 500 um, subscribers uh, video that you're making comics too. And I'm so excited for you guys. That's great. Let's make comics together. Let's go kick some butt and take over the world. So I'm Becca Hilburn. I'll see you guys again soon with the watercolor video. I hope you guys have a great day. If you enjoyed this video, please remember to hit like, helps me out, and uh, subscribe to my channel. So I'll see you guys later. Bye.